Hallelujah. We've been talking about strength for the journey. Strength for the journey. And here's the QR code up here. You can go ahead. We're going to be talking about our church's structure today. Our church's structure today. And what God has ordained for Become Church, how we operate. This has been our membership class we've been taking you through. Normally, in the past, we would do it in one day. We would lock in a room after service for about four to five hours and go through it. But the Holy Spirit says, no, I want you to do it differently now in this season that the church is in. And I want you to take everyone through it so they know what Become is about. Last the couple of weeks, we learned about our mission and our vision and what we're called to do and be as a church, what specifically God has called Become Church to do. Each church has its own thumbprint, amen? And God has given each church a mission and a vision, and that's why we're not trying to be like the church down the street. We're not trying to be like any other church, but only what God's ordained us to be, amen? Amen. So as, as, as our custom, we're going to stand to our feet and read the Word. Did everybody scan the QR code so you can get the outline of the message? The QR code is right up here. Make sure you scan that, and we have that on our, or for those of you that are online, you should be looking at that slide right now. We're going to read from Psalms 133 in the Contemporary English Bible. Then we're going to really read Philippians 2, 1 through 2, and the Amplified Bible. Then you're going to sit down. I'm going to stay standing, and we're going to preach the Word. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Are y'all ready to read the Word together? Are y'all ready to read God's Word? The Bible says, the truth will set you free. And God is setting us free. Let's read together Psalms 1, oops, let me, Psalms 133, Contemporary English Bible, says, let's read together, look at how good, we, so, okay, this left side is alive, okay, we're going to start again, one, two, three, look at how good and pleasing it is when families live together as one. It is like an expensive oil poured over the head, running down onto the beard, Aaron's beard, which extended over the collar of his robe. Amen. Said it's good. Now let's look at Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. And it's subtitled to the scripture is, Be Like Christ. Turn to your neighbor. Say, neighbor. You look great today. You mean you look absolutely marvelous. I mean, you work in that outfit. But I got to let you know, we are called to be like Christ. Now find somebody else. Find somebody else. Look at them in the dead white of their eyes. Say, neighbor, it's so good to see you today. You look marvelous, spectacular. You look awesome. But I got to let you know, you are called, we are called to be like Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's get ready to read now. Philippians chapter 2, verse 1. Let's read together. Therefore, if there's any encouragement and comfort in Christ, as there certainly is in abundance, if there is any consolation of love, if there's any fellowship that we share in the Spirit, if there is any great depth of affection and compassion, make my joy complete by being of the same mind, having the same love toward one another, knit together in spirit, intent on one purpose, and living a life that reflects your faith and spreads the gospel, the good news regarding salvation through faith in Christ. Amen? Let's bow our heads. Father, we just thank you right now for every person under the sound of my voice. We thank you for the word, and we thank you for your will and your spirit that's in this place. Howard sits down right now. Holy Spirit, you stand up and rise up like never before. Speak to us like only you can. God, anoint these lips of clay that they may declare your truth, that the hearers may be transformed, not reformed, but transformed from the inside out. 
Holy Spirit, you have a way of speaking to each person like they're the only ones in the room. As we go through the journey, as we go through strength for the journey, God calls us to see you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen and amen. If you believe in God, give him a big hand clap, and you may be seated if you can. Again, we've been talking about strength for the journey. Strength for the journey. Strength for the journey. Strength. Everybody say strength for the journey. Say, turn and say, neighbor, I'm talking to you again. God wants to give you strength for the journey. Find somebody else. Find somebody else. I'm going to wait till everybody finds somebody else. Some of y'all looking at the same people. Say, neighbor, God wants to give you strength for the journey. Find somebody else. You at home. You on YouTube. You, on, you may be riding in the car on Facebook Live. Find somebody else. Say, neighbor, you really got to get this. God wants to give you strength for the journey. You are not called to do this thing by yourself. You need family, and you need the family of God. Amen. Amen. Give God some praise for that. Amen. See, you, you, you got twofold purpose in this family. You're born into it, and then you join it. Did you hear me? Twofold. You're born into it, and then you join it. You become born again in Christ, which makes you my sister and brother, and then you have to choose. Everybody say choose. You got to choose to be a part. Amen. Free will's in there. We get freedom within limits because God is not, he's, he's not a boss. Amen. He, he, he's loving, he's caring, and he woos you into him. Amen. Now, like always, there's one thing. Everybody say one thing. And we're going to read the one thing together. Are you ready? Here it is. Journey one is a commitment to the abundant life. Journey one is a commitment to the abundant life. What are we talking about? John 10 and 10 says this. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. God has not come to hurt you. God has come to bless you. Everything about him is blessings. Are y'all with me? So many times in the church we focus on the negative and not the positive. What I want you to get and understand that God has come to set the captives free. That doesn't sound like death. That sounds like life to me. Amen? It sounds like glory. It sounds like wholeness. God has come to heal your body. He's come to change your mind and get you on the right track so that you can prosper. Amen? Amen. That sounds like blessings to me. Amen? That doesn't sound like something I should be scared of. It sounds like something I should what? Embrace. Embrace. Amen? Embrace God's flow. Now, Psalms 133. Psalms 133. We read this together. And again, we're going to be reading quite a bit of scriptures today. Why? Because we will know the truth, and the truth will set us free. Amen? And see, one of the things you have to do when we get saved, we have to find our identity in Christ. Many of us, the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, he is a what? New creature. New creation. New creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become what? New. So you have to find out your new identity in Christ. For so many years, we've been told our lie identity. Our lie identity is anything under the standard that God has set for you. But I want to introduce you into the word of your identity in Christ. Amen? I see your identity, I, I see, in Christ. And he's called to make you whole. And I want you to make that I, I see your my identity. Not that lie identity that says you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, you, you came from the wrong side of the track, uh, you, you, or whatever. That identity in Christ that says you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a special people called for his purposes, called out of darkness into his marvelous 
light. Let's read this, Psalms 133. Uh, listen real quickly. It says, look how good and pleasing it is when some of us, what does it say there? When what? When what? How many know God is about family? How many know God wants to restore your family? Oh, some of you ain't here. How many know God wants to restore your family? God wants your family whole. Amen? And at first, he'll deal with your immediate family. Everybody say your immediate family. Some of you trying to save in-laws and outlaws, and you ain't got saved yet. You got to get your house right. And some of you ain't moved out your in-laws and outlaws' houses. You've been married, but you still act like you're single. Help me, Holy Ghost. Amen, light bulb. Somebody outside your house has more say in your house than your spouse. Amen, light bulb. Let me help you out, pastor. That's good preaching, pastor. Thank you. I just got beside myself. Amen. Amen anyhow. Christ has to be king. He says two shall leave, cleave to one another. And nothing should separate them. Are you with me? Love my mom. Love my dad. May he rest in peace. But guess what? God's first. Then Lady T. When she make me angry, she's still first. When I make her angry, she still keeps me first. Are y'all with me? Hallelujah. It's a choice. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, love is a choice. It's a daily choice. Say, neighbor, love is work. A daily work. Amen. Now, let me tell you something. Marriage is not for punks. Did you hear me, church? Marriage is not, I'm not talking about like this bachelor stuff that you see in this bachelorette where you're trying everything and see if it fits. And, you know, it, or marriage at first sight where it's like, oh, I love you, I love you. Then I hate you. I don't want to see you. I'm talking about it's work, but it's good work. Everybody say good work. And some of us will work so hard on our jobs, but we won't. I mean, see, now I'm not, this is not what I'm trying to talk about today. This is Holy Ghost. Maybe this is a, all my married folk, raise your hand. Raise your hand if you're married and you love Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. This is your encouragement today. How many think you want to be married? Raise your hand. Hallelujah. This is, your, this is your, your precursor, your prerequisite. I want to let you know is this. Guess what? Marriage is work. It's good work. The Bible says nothing like when two are walking together agreed. You have exponential power in your prayers, exponential healing, exponential deliverance, exponential. Are you with me? Come on. That's something to praise God about. And that's why the enemy tries to come in and sow strife. And how many know during Thanksgiving, that's when the devil likes to come in, during holidays? You know why? Because we made them what? Holidays and not holy days. You understand when we get the word holiday from holy day? It can't be about the presence. It can't be about the gifts more than it's about Jesus. It can't be about the turkey and the fried ham and the, and, I mean the fried turkey and the ham and the collard greens and greens, tomatoes. Are y'all with me? Can't be about all of that more than it's about Jesus. I got greens, tomato, yam. Are y'all with me? Can't be about just that. You know I love that song. I like greens, tomato, ham. Are you with me? It has to be about Christ. And that we God has brought us together. Now here's the other thing. Can I can I sow this? Can I give you one more free seed? This is going to blow your mind. This is going to blow your mind. None of our families are perfect. Because sometimes, I know y'all don't, maybe for this for another church. We think our side of the family is more holy than the other. You better be glad I got you. None of our, I'm saying it to this side too, of our families are perfect. God brings you together so that you can learn from each other. 
side has one thing. Now, and, and, and because everything's not perfect, you don't need everything from each side. God's called you to set up a new tradition. Some of y'all trying to set everything up like mama's house, and mama's house had, and daddy's house had a whole bunch of stuff in there. Amen? God wants to set some new traditions that are based in Christ so that they can follow your lineage, so your kids can add something to the lineage and develop a godly legacy. But you're so busy trying to be like what you was in the past. Help me, Holy Ghost. Look at how good and pl- I'm going to get to the word, <laughs> pleasing it is. Thomas, I'm going to get right to the word. How families live together as what? One, not divisive, as one. It is like expensive oil poured over the head, running down onto the beard, Aaron's beard, which extended over the collar of his robes. See, God's house is called to be a family. It's called to be a family of families. Did you hear me? Did you know you're my brother? You're my sister? Because we got the same daddy. One blood in Christ. Amen? Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Become church structure. Now, wait, you know what? I want to get one more. I, is, I want to go back to this one. Oh, no, I'm going to hit it later. That's all right. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm, I'm trying. Holy Spirit, just direct us. Are y'all getting something out of this? Okay, we're going to deal with the structure. Everybody say the structure. Amen. Become church structure. Amen. Now, the scripture bases out of 1 Corinthians chapter 14, 33, and 40. For God is not a God of disorder, but of peace. Everything should be done in fitting in an orderly way. Amen. So that's why I never understand like this. I know every time you come in the house of God, you should be walking in peace. Yes. Well, pastor, I had to stay home today because I won't know you get in your car and you get right with God and, and, re- and release whoever you need to release and get in peace. Don't make, don't make this a whole religious experience. All you have to, everybody repeat after me, say, Lord, I release all those that have hurt me. I am sorry for hurting those that are mad at me, and I walk and receive God's grace. It's just that simple, you all. It's an act of your will. You remember the old saints back in the day, how, somebody, who's over 30 up in here? How you, over there, and it said, I got a mind made up. Are y'all remember the, the saints used to say that? And I, I, to do right. Are you with me? They had a made-up mind. They had songs about having a made-up mind. We weaken our minds now. We don't make our minds up. We don't decide. We'll decide about our careers. But I'm not talking about a career. Can you have a made-up mind about going for Christ no matter what? Amen? The nature of the church determines its structure. The structure of the church should not be determined by culture, business practice, or even denominational tradition. Does everybody agree with that? Amen. See, now, understand this. I'm going to give you a few points about the church, and you can give me my clock up as well. The church is a fellowship, a fellowship, first blank. The church is a fellowship. And guess what? They devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings and to the fellowship, Acts 2 and 42. Here's the key point about understanding about the church. Our top priority in a fellowship is what? Peace and edification. Peace. And edification. Is that up there? Yes. Peace and edification. What are we, what are we called to do? To walk and, and, and what? We're called to be what? Peacemakers. The Bible says, blessed are the peacemakers for they what? They what? Which one? Do they inherit? Or are they going to go? We got, we got, okay. See, we already got division in the church right now. Who's going to look at the word and tell me what it is? Matthew chapter 5. Come on, real quickly. The peace, blessed are the peace comes for they what? They are the sons. They are the children of God. See how we ended that, that conflict, that division right quick? Now we got peace again. We went to the Word. That was an object lesson right there. I could have told you what it said, but we got to go to the Word, and we let the Word settle the issue. Are y'all with me? Edification, what does that mean? We build one another up. Where you're weak, we build up. If, there's a, if, if we're believing a lie or a stronghold, guess what? We expose that lie with truth, which may tear you down. But then after we give you that truth, we got to build you back up. Here's the truth. You're not living at the level that God's called you to live at. Here's the truth. God's called you to have abundant life. Come on, get on, get on, flex a little bit. 
flex a little bit in the spirit. Are y'all with me? Amen. If God be for you, no one can stand up against you. Amen. Let it, Romans 14 and 19 says, let us therefore, and when you see it, therefore, you got to look at what it's. Therefore, make every effort to do what leads to peace and to what? Mutual edification. We should be trying to build each other. My desire is that you be the best that you can be and that I can be the best that I can be if you're not the best that you can be. Are y'all with me? Mutual edification. I want you to be strong so I can be strong because I see my destiny tied to you, connected. We don't look nothing alike. We don't have the same last name, but I see my destiny connected to you because we got the same Father God. Are y'all with me? Key point, any attitude that causes disunity is sin. Attitude, I don't need nobody. It's all about me, my profile. Matter of fact, let me take my, man, let me go on Facebook, Face Live right now. Hey, well, look at what I'm doing. Look how God is blessing me and only me. We're living in the generation now where we make it about me. It's about us. We got to go against the culture. Are you with me? And build up one another. Amen. Philippians chapter 2. One and three. I'm not saying don't Instagram, don't Facebook Live. I do both. But don't make it just about you. Change lives. Amen? Philippians chapter 2, verse 1 and 3, it says what? Therefore, you see a therefore, you got to look at what it's. If there's any what? Encouragement. Any what? In Christ. Notice the key word is in Christ. Everybody say in Christ. As there certainly is in abundance, if there is any consolation of love, if there's any fellowship that we share in the Spirit, if there's any great depth of affection and compassion, make my joy what? Half. Partial. Make my joy what? Complete. So it lets me know that my joy could be incomplete when I don't do these things. It says, for the record that are watching me, it says, make my joy complete by being of the same mind. This is how you do it. Having the same love toward one another from the wealthiest person to the one that's not wealthy. See somebody come in. Oh, they driving a, oh, they driving a, oh, a Bentley. Oh, boy, praise God. That's my friend. They driving a hoopty. Praise God. See that same excitement. Are you with me? If they're wearing Jordans or they're wearing, I'm just a joy to be here. <laughs> Love up them the same way. Are you with me? Designer clothes or holy clothes, you know, the ones that got holes in them. Some of you know about that, amen? Love up on them. Make a difference. Smelling good, coming in here may not be smelling good. Can they come to the church and feel the love of God? Amen? Come on. Make my complete by adding of the same, having the same love toward one another. Look, look, knit together in the Spirit. That means we can be knitted when we yield. Intent on what? Several purposes? One purpose. Connect, grow, serve, and go. And living a life that reflects your faith and spreads the gospel the good news regarding salvation through faith in Christ. Now, I can just go home right there. Why? Because guess what? He just said we're called to spread the what? Good news. And you have some people spreading the bad news. It's the good news. And thirdly, do nothing from what? Selfishness. Or what? Empty conceit through factional motives and strife. But with the attitude of humility being neither arrogant nor self-righteous, regard others as more important than yourselves. You know, if each of us do this, you say, no, you know, I'm doing it, but so-and-so, don't stop saying what so-and-so ain't doing. What are you doing? Stay right there on you. Examine your heart and then provoke them to good works by your lifestyle. We used to have this saying, because the Bible says everywhere your feet shall tread should be on the serpent's head. And we used to have this saying back in campus ministry back in the day, kick the devil with your lifestyle. Live in such a way that your, the way you walk kicks the devil in the teeth every time. Amen? Amen. Turn your next neighbor. It's time to kick the devil with your lifestyle. Amen? Now, I want you to do this. I want you to examine, take a picture of these scriptures here. We're going to go through a few of them. 
and you have them on your notes, it says what? Here's a key point. A good structure promotes what? Unity and downplays division. A good structure sh should promote unity and downplays the vision. If we see structures that are doing opposite of that, we remove those structures and become. We don't have any sacred cows here. Are you with me? We will, we will shift in a minute. People say, well, I thought you said we were going to do it. No, I was wrong. We're doing this now. Are y'all with me? Because God has to be first and he has to lead us. Amen? 1 Corinthians eleven seventeen says this, In the following directives, I have no praise for you, for your meetings do more harm than good. I hear that when you come together as a church, there are divisions among you. See, we're trying to get rid of that. Amen? Proverbs 17 and 14 says this. This is one of the scriptures that are there. Proverbs 17 and 14 says, In the beginning of strife is the letting out water, as from a small break in a dam. First, it trickles, and then it gushes. Hey, it starts as a little drip, though. Are y'all with me? Therefore, abandon the quarrel before it breaks out and tempers explode. How many can feel when you're about to lose it? How many know what I'm talking about? You know when you're about to lose it. Don't get off. Uh, I, some of y'all look real special. I never lose it. I'm always, I just pray in the spirit. That's on a good day, but I'm talking about when you ain't having a good day. And that person has gotten on your last nerve. And maybe most of the time it's somebody close to you. Maybe a spouse or a child. Ain't nobody can. Uh, guess what? It tells you what you need to do. You just need to be quiet. Amen? You need to abandon the quarrel before it what? Breaks out and tempers explode. Colossians 2 and 2. Colossians 2 and 2 says this. For my hope is that their hearts may be encouraged as they are what? Knit together. Here's the key in what? Unselfish. So I, I did the amplified version because it gives you the original uh, Greek in the New Testament. And some of the words have more than one meaning. So when we say knit together, it's talking about an not just love, but that agape love, unselfish love. It ain't phileo love. Agape, unconditional, unselfish love. So that they may have what? All the riches that come from the full assurance of understanding the joy of salvation, resulting in a true and more intimate knowledge of the mystery of God, that is Christ. Amen? See, in, in our language, we say we love ice cream, and we love this chair, and we love my car, and we say, I love my wife. How many know it's not all the same love? And it's the same way. They have phileo love. They have storage love. They have agape love. It's like five different words for love in the Greek, but they're different words in that language. And that's why we point out it's unselfish love. I got to see God in you so I can have an unselfish love in you. Amen? Elijah, I see God in you. Amen? Joshua, I see God in you. Amen? I see God in you. Here we go. The church, you ready for the next point? Almost done. Almost done. That's Colossians, uh, oh no, the church is a family. Y'all got to stop asking me all these questions. I got to speed up. 1 Peter 3 and 8 says this, you should be like one big happy family full of sympathy toward each other, loving one another, and with tender hearts and humble minds. 1 Peter 3 and 8. Amen? Galatians 6 and 10, Hebrews 2 and 10 through 12, and 1 Peter 4, 17 and 3. I mean, 4 and 17. Now, the church is a body. Everybody say a body. a body. Amen. So it's a family and it's a body. 1 Corinthians 12 and 27, Ephesians 5 and 23, 1 and 22 and 23, Colossians 1 and 18 and 2 and 19. Amen. Let's keep going. The Bible says in Colossians 3 and 15, let the peace of Christ inner calm of one who walks daily with them be the controlling factor in your hearts deciding and selling questions that arise. To this peace, indeed, you were called as what? Member. Everybody say members in God's body, in one body of believers, and be thankful to God always. Do you understand that we are the body of Christ? He is the head. We are the body. How do you treat your body parts? How do you treat your body parts? 
if, 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 the, if, if, if we, if we've got, if we, if we came before the Lord right now, do you talk about your body parts when they're not around? You know, that sister just get on my last sir. That brother just, you know. I'm tired of giving them Altoids. I'm tired of whatever. Are y'all with me? Can you love? Can you keep giving the Altoids? Can you keep giving the hugs? Can you keep giving the encouragement and being there and praying for one another? That's what God's body and God's family does. Amen? I'm being facetious, but hey, some real things sometimes. We got to press through the flesh and love people. Amen? Understand this. At Become Church, we have a simple structure so we can maximize ministry and minimize maintenance. We want to be low maintenance. Everybody say low maintenance. Amen? Ephesians 4, 11 through 13 says this, it was he who gave some to be what? Apostles, to be prophets, to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers, to prepare. Look what, it, look what they're called to do. To prepare God's people for works of what? Of, of sitting down on their blessed assurances. Works. Everybody, everybody say works. I mean, say I'm turning you to say neighbor. We're called to work. Works of service. Amen? Let's keep reading. So that the body of Christ may be what? Built up until we all what? Unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature. Well, I'm just tired of working, Pastor. I've always worked. I'm just, I just want to sit on my blessed assurance and just take this word in because the word is so good. I want to talk my little baby about God got rough life. I want to sit in my spiritual bastonet and be a little Christianette and get my little sermonette. No, God says, no, it's time to grow up. It's time to grow up. And you grow in service. You don't have it perfect. God perfects you in the midst of you serving. Are y'all with me? Amen. That be to come church, we believe that people are the ministers and that the pastors are the administers. The church is the flock, John 10 and 1 through 30, Matthew 26 and 3, I mean 31 that is, and 25 and 33. Therefore it's cared for and led by shepherd. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know what I love you, Jesus said. Take care of my sheep. John 21, 16, sounds like a shepherd to me. Amen? Here, next thing, three different terms are used in the New Testament to refer to the name of church leaders. Poimen means pastor or shepherd. Presbyteros means elder or mature. Episcopos means overseer. Look, to the elders among you, I appeal, be shepherds of God's flock, serving as overseers. First Peter 5, 1 through 2. I, I can let you know our staff here, my wife, myself as pastors and leaders, we take our job very seriously. Amen. Paul asked, Paul sent to Ephesus for the elders of the church. When they arrived, he said to them, guard yourselves and all the flock which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Be shepherds of the church of God. Acts chapter 20. Amen. Ephesians 4, 15 and 16 says, but speaking the truth in love. How I many you know as a pastor, we got to speak the truth in love sometimes? We are to grow up in all aspects into him who is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body being fitted and held together by that which every point joint supplies according to the proper working of each individual part causes the growth of the body for the building up of itself in love. Ephesians 4, 15 through 16. Understand this. Key points. The head of Become Church is Jesus Christ. As a body, we seek to reflect his priorities in all we do and how we do it. No decision is ever made that would knowingly contradict any of Jesus' teaching. In addition, through the guidance of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, we endeavor to discern God's program for us as a church. Whenever we implement a plan, we keep one eye on our effectiveness and the other on the next step God seems to be showing us. Now, we believe in multifaceted leadership. Multifaceted leadership. What does that mean? 
on a human level, two groups of people direct the ministries have become. Those bodies are elders and staff. The elders are members of the body who provide general watch and care and oversight. They evaluate the teaching ministry of the church, review major ministry decisions and strategic initiatives, and oversee church discipline. They use their wisdom, discernment, and shepherding gifts to ensure the church remains on a true course biblically. And this team is led by the lead pastor. Also, we believe in serving in unity. Everybody say serving in unity. Okay, that this means what makes Become Church Works movie is the humble, servant-like spirit of these groups of people. That means you should see it from me first. That means I should be willing to do anything in the house. I remember we're at the old building, we were cleaning the bathrooms, and somebody came in and said, I've never seen a pastor clean bathrooms before. I said, well, keep looking, you're going to see one, amen? Because <laughs> I'm going to clean this bathroom. She said, but you shouldn't be doing this. I said, show me that in the Bible when I'm not supposed to clean the bathroom. There's no task that's too small, no task too great, amen? And if it has to, if, if it's there to get done, I got to get it done, amen? Uh, leaders at all levels do not see it as their role to lord, it to lord it over. Those in their charge but desire to serve the body with their gifts and to build the kingdom rather than an empire. See, we're about kingdom building, not empire building. This is not, you mean, not just trying to build something for me, amen? We're building something for our families, can look back on and set up a godly posterity. Members of the church has this servanthood in action and likewise esteem those in leadership. Whether as a leader or as a follower, everyone in the church is submitted to Jesus Christ and we all consider others more important than ourselves, Philippians 2 and 3. Get this now, the spirit of cooperation and appreciation is one of God's greatest blessings to our body. It's a fragile gift, however, any person desiring it becomes a member, should value it and protect it. It's an honor to serve in God's house. Do we understand that? Yes. It's an honor for me to be able to pastor you as a pastor. And I said this from the beginning. We try to walk in with hot relationships. What's hot? Humble, open, and transparent. Humility has to be the first thing. We got to walk in humility. If you think you're humble, you probably are not. Openness, open to change. Transparency, not only do I show you my victories, I got to be willing to show you my scars. Are y'all with me? That's what it's about here at Become. It's about growing lives together, connecting people to God, through love, acceptance, and forgiveness, growing them in Christ-like maturity through God's Word and application of the Word. We do that in our Wednesday night meetings, our Sunday meetings, our leadership meetings, our men's and women meetings, our Become You meetings, and then what? Serving in the house of God. Every time you see a need, find it and meet it. Are you with me? Don't ask the question, do you want me to do that? You know, my mentor told me a long time ago when I was 17, he says, if you ask the question, you're too late. Do it. Do it. You know? Do it. Do it. Did I have to tell him to pick that up? He saw a need. He did it. He could say, Pastor, you want me to pick that up? No, he picked it up. Because God is raising servant leaders in this place. Why is that important? Because when we go to the communities, in the marketplace, beyond the four walls of this church, where we're called to minister because the, the harvest is ready, the field is ready for us, fields of ministry, fields of business, fields of entrepreneurship, fields of education, fields of, fields of technology, fields, are y'all with me? The medical fields, don't we call them fields? That's where the gospel's needed. And they need servants, not people puffed up who don't know how to serve. The, the theater and the acting field. Are you with me? God needs us there. Amen? Stand to your feet, everybody. One thing, one thing, and we're back at it. Amen? It's a commitment to abundant life, and God wants you to have that abundant life. 
I'm tired of allowing the devil to steal, kill, and destroy from his people. Amen? God has brought you in this church so that you can be in a place of growth and a place of prayer where God can develop you and give you a biblical perspective on how life's supposed to be. And let me tell you something. When you leave this place, you can take that anywhere you go. You can take that to the next church. Amen? You can take that to your school. You can take that to your job and make a difference. Because you're, you're God's champion and you're called to make a difference. Bow your heads, everyone. Father, we just thank you right now for every person under the sound of my voice. I thank you that they're not here by accident. They're not here by chance. But you ordained them to be here before the foundations of the world. You ordained them to be in this place at this time, at this moment. They're not here just because a friend invited them. They're not here because it's just because it's convenient. They're here, God, because you've ordained them to be here. And you want to bring transformation in their heart and mind. God, do it in them right now. If you're here and you're saying, Pastor, I need the Lord. I don't know the Lord, and I want him first in my life. Go ahead and raise your hands up to God. If you're here and you're saying, I know the Lord, but I need to go deeper, Pastor. I'm not where I, I need to be. There's errors that I need to grow errors of purity and wholeness, errors of just being a servant and, and, and laying down my pride. Look, I got both hands up on that too. How many knows? Because I've got 30 plus years in this thing, actually more than that, 40 plus years in this thing, and I still need God. I need Him more. Amen. So can we pray this prayer together? Say, Dear Lord, come into my life. Change me from the inside out. I receive your Son, Jesus Christ that he died for my sins. He was buried and he rose again for me. And he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. Lord, I want that to be me. I want to be in your church. I receive your son in Jesus' name. Now fill me, God, with your Holy Spirit. Baptize me with your Holy Spirit. Convict me, God. Convince me, God. And convert me, God. In Jesus' name. Change me, God. From the inside out. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And in Jesus' name. If you believe that, give God some praise. Hallelujah. Go ahead and worship Him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, for your power. Thank you for your love. Grab somebody's hand. We're getting ready to close out. We got to move quickly. It says up there, depart to serve. Depart to serve. Depart. Turn to look at somebody and say, neighbor, we're getting ready to depart so that we can serve and make a difference. Come on, bring it on up in here. Come on. Up in here, up in here. Can we make a please? Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. Can we do it like we used to do it old school? We used to do it back at the school. Oh, y'all let go? Oh, we, okay, okay. There's a plan. Unity, okay. You and I tie. Unity. You and I T-Y. You and I T. Okay, some of y'all don't know about that. BC before Christ. Tifa, the queen. You and I tie together. You're God's champions. You're God's champions. God has raised you up to make a difference. Amen. And he's putting this apostolic word. This is a word. It's a building word. This is not a shout. Oh, hallelujah. No, this is a building word. Because after you shout, you got to walk. Are you with me? And sometimes there's times where the Holy Spirit will come in and he's teaching us. So he's teaching us how to walk circumspectly. Why? So you can pull somebody else up. Come on up here. Come on up a little higher. See, that's what he wants you to do. You're already up here. Amen. Hallelujah. Get down. No. That's what the devil does. No, God pulls you up. Amen. And then he says, if he sees you already up, he locks arms. Say, now let's get close so we can be even better. Amen. Are y'all ready to pray? Let's pray. Father, we just thank you right now for everyone under the sound of my voice. Anoint these champions, your children, sons and daughters. God, I just thank you, Lord. Strengthen them right now. Build them up on every leaning side. Bless their classes, bless their jobs, bless their fields of ministry. In Jesus' name, 
In Jesus' name. And in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. How many know God is good? Oh, how many know God is good? Oh, somebody got it. How many know God is good? And all the time? God is good. Amen. Amen. We want to make a quick presentation. Miss Michelle, come on up here real quick. Quick, quick, quick. Quick, Miss Michelle, come on. Come on, from the ladies. Yes, yes. Give the Lord a hand clap for First Lady T. And the wild women. And well, Roger, come on up here representing the men with me. Come on, Roger. Let's give him a hand clap as well. I need Miss Christine to come up here. Caleb, Caden, come on up here as well. Come on, quickly, quickly, quickly. Quickly, quickly, quickly. You're going the wrong way. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mama didn't know I was going to call her up here. Come on. Good day. We appreciate you. Come on, let's give them a hand clap. Mama Cora Lee, their, ma their matriarch, transitioned to be go home with the Lord on her 86th birthday, 86th birthday. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap. See, God can heal us a number of ways. Sometimes he takes us home. And eight is the number for new beginnings. Six is for man's perfection. She has a perfected beginning in God on her birthday, amen? And we're gonna miss her. We are grieving her along with our family. The Bible says we mourn with those who mourn, but we, the wild women, and the move men, amen, wanted to, I'm going to let y'all, I'll give, y'all give one and I'll give one, amen, let's give, come on lady T, no lady, she's up, there you go, amen, let's give them a hug, amen, come on, we love you, that's a little token of our, our love toward you, we appreciate you, amen, come on big man, you got to bring it in, don't try to, don't try to get shy. He gives me hugs all the time. But he says, not on camera, okay? Let's give them another hand clap, amen. Yeah, man, let's walk now. Thank you so much. And you have any words you want to say? Come on, just extend your hand to her. Father, we just thank you right now for Christine, Lord. And Lord, we understand the, the love of a mother is so great, especially when you have a godly mother that's faithful, that's loving and caring. And God, we thank you for the mantle of God that rested on her life and that's being passed down on Christine, on Caleb, on Caden, on Christian God, and all of her sisters, God. We embrace the mantle for faithfulness. We embrace the mantle for love. We embrace the mantle for for grace, God, for prayer, and for peace, God. Even as she was just a person of peace, God, I just, we embrace that for them as well. In Jesus' name. Come on, in Jesus' name. And in Jesus' name. Lord, comfort them in the days ahead, in the midst of the tears, in the midst of the celebration, in the midst of the transition. Comfort them in the days ahead, Lord, like only you can. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Give God some praise. We love you. If you have any words, do you have any words? I don't. One, two, one, two. Do you have any words? You do? Okay. Just want to say thank you for my comfort. thank you to each and every one of you for your prayers, for your thoughts, for your lovely gifts. Thank you. My mom lived a good life. She impacted so many people in a positive way. And I know she's 
at home to be with the Lord. I know that she died at home in her bed, in her house, not in the hospital. And I was able to be there. All of her kids were there. So we're so grateful for that. And she's in a better place. And thank you, God. Amen. Give God some praise. Help mom down. You go ahead of her, grab her hand. Let me show them how to do it. You grab her hand. Lady T, oh, she's supposed to wait for me. It's all right. Go ahead, baby. Go ahead. I, that's all right, sweet. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Give God some praise, y'all. Time to give back to God. Come on, give God some praise. The Bible says in the New Living Translation, Luke 6, it says, give and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full, pressed down, shaken together to make you room for more running over and poured into your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount you get back. Amen? Three things when we give. What's the first thing we want to remember as a church? is a cheat sheet at the top. What do we want to remember? God is your source of supply. Say with me, God is our source and our supply. He must be our only source, our jobs, our resources, but God is our source. What's the second thing? Bring your seed to Jesus. I can't hear you, church. Bring your seed to Jesus. Bring your seed to Jesus, amen. Look beyond man. Sow it by faith and release it by faith. Everybody say supernatural. Supernatural. Give me an envelope, please. Supernatural. supernatural. Seed. Everything that we're sowing is seed. Amen. And it's going to produce a harvest. And third, follow the instructions of the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, what do you want me to give? So many times we come with a set preconceived notion, but sometimes God wants to do more. Everybody say supernatural. Supernatural. Allow God to expand you to give more on today. Amen. How many need a supernatural blessing? Uh, amen. Well, I'm ready to give. Stand to your feet. We're going to see our declarations. If you're making out checks, make them payable to become church. If you're online, you need to give online. If you would take us to the online page for them to see, please. Hallelujah. Go to our website, www.becomechurch.com. Click on the giving button. Amen. Make sure on the front of the envelope you write your prayer request. Everybody say prayer. Prayer. Changes things. Changes things. Oh, come on. Say it loud. Say prayer. Prayer. Changes things. Changes things. Now, I see about 15 people saying it. Come on, I need everybody. Turn and say neighbor. Amen. Pastor's going to wait on you. Here we go. Say, here we go. One, two, three. Prayer. Prayer. Changes things. Changes things. Amen. Amen. So write down your prayer request, or your praise report. If God has done something good for you, write that so we can praise God with you. Amen? And fill it out in its entirety. Please do not write in tongues. Write with the understanding. Amen? So we can give you your tax credit at the end of the year. We are a 501c3 organization. Y'all ready to declare? As we receive today's offering, we are believing the Lord for jobs and better jobs. Raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and return, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, debts paid off, expenses decreased, and blessings and increase. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all of my financial needs that I may have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's pray. Hold your seed up. Father, we just thank you for every person under the sound of my voice that is sowing a seed, whether big or small. God, it's supernatural. Bring increase to every household. Help us to meet the, reach the hurting and do the will of God by supplying for your kingdom, Lord. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. In Jesus' name. Jesus. And one more time for the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, Jesus name. let the people of God yell and shout out, amen. Amen. amen, amen, amen. 